Have you ever wondered how and why humanity is classified into different races? It's a fascinating question, isn't it? The concept of race, as we know it, is a method of categorizing humans based on physical characteristics. It's more than just skin deep. It's about the shape of our bodies, the texture of our hair, the color of our eyes. It's an intriguing, complex, and at times contentious subject. So, buckle up as we delve into the origins, history, and validity of one such classification, the Negroid race. The term Negroid has a long history tracing back to the 19th century. As anthropologists sought to understand the diverse tapestry of human existence, they turned to physical characteristics to classify different groups of people. The Negroid classification was part of this effort, born in the era of exploration and scientific discovery, a time when the world was becoming smaller and more interconnected. The creation of the Negroid classification was not a random act but a deliberate attempt to categorize humanity based on observable physical traits. It was the brainchild of 19th century anthropologists who, in their quest to create order in the diverse human world, use this classification to group people of sub-Saharan African ancestry together. The defining characteristics of the Negroid classification were primarily physical, centering on skin color, hair type, and facial features. The anthropologists who devised this classification observed that individuals they categorized as Negroid typically had dark skin, tightly coiled hair, and distinct facial features such as broad noses and full lips. But it wasn't just about physical characteristics. The Negroid classification also encompassed cultural aspects such as language and social structure. Anthropologists of the time believed that these cultural traits were linked to biological ones, a notion that is now largely discredited. It's important to remember that this classification was a product of its time. The 19th century world was one of empires and colonies, a world where the concept of race was used to justify unequal power dynamics, the creation of the Negroid classification, and others like it, was influenced by these societal factors as much as it was by the scientific curiosity of the era. While the Negroid classification did provide a framework for understanding human diversity, it was a simplistic one. It reduced the rich complexity of human existence to a few physical and cultural traits, failing to capture the full spectrum of human variation. This classification however was not without its controversies and debates. The Negroid classification swiftly stirred a whirlwind of disputes. When the Negroid classification was first introduced, it was met with a wave of controversies. The main point of contention was its scientific validity. Scholars and scientists alike questioned the basis of this classification. Some argued that it was too simplistic to categorize the vast diversity of human beings into just a few groups based on physical characteristics. They posited that this approach overlooked the rich complexity of our genetic makeup, our cultures, and our histories. Furthermore, the classification system was criticized for its potential misuse for racial discrimination. Critics pointed out that such categorizations have been historically leveraged to justify prejudices, stereotypes, and biases. They feared that the Negroid classification, like others, could be weaponized to perpetuate harmful racial hierarchies. This concern was not unfounded. Over the years we've seen instances where such classifications were indeed used to promote divisive ideologies and to marginalize certain groups of people. The debates also extended to the academic world. Anthropologists and sociologists clashed over the implications of the classification. While some saw it as a tool to understand human variation, others viewed it as a relic of a bygone era of scientific racism. These debates were fierce and impassioned reflecting the profound complexities of human identity and race. Yet, amidst these controversies there were those who defended the classification. They argued that it provided a framework to study human diversity and evolution. They contended that, when used responsibly, it could offer insights into our shared human heritage. But the question remained, can a classification system, fraught with so much controversy and potential for misuse, truly serve the cause of scientific inquiry? Or does it risk oversimplifying the rich tapestry of human diversity, and promoting harmful stereotypes. These debates have shaped the discourse around the Negroid classification and have forced us to reckon with the deep-seated issues of race, identity, and discrimination. They've made us question our understanding of human diversity and challenged us to seek better, more nuanced ways of studying it. Yet despite the controversies, the classification managed to persist. The Negroid classification, controversial as it may be, has had a profound influence on anthropology and society. 
Despite the debates and controversies surrounding its validity, the Negroid classification has shown a remarkable persistence in anthropological studies. It has held sway in shaping our understanding of human variation and race. Its influence can be traced through a myriad of anthropological theories and studies, even those that have evolved beyond the traditional racial classifications. The persistence of the Negroid classification is testament to the powerful impact of early anthropological thought. Its influence seeped into various branches of anthropology, from biological anthropology to cultural and social anthropology. It influenced how scholars studied human variation, how they interpreted the differences, and how they constructed narratives about human history. But the influence of the Negroid classification did not stop at the academic level. It reached far beyond the walls of research institutions and classrooms, affecting societal perceptions of race. Ideas about race, based on these classifications, have found their way into our social and cultural fabric. They have shaped our interactions, our policies, and our understanding of each other. The Negroid classification, along with other racial classifications, has contributed to the creation of stereotypes and prejudices. It has influenced how different races are perceived and treated in society. It has played a role in shaping the narrative of racial superiority and inferiority, a narrative that societies around the world have grappled with for centuries. Yet, it's important to remember that the Negroid classification, like all classifications, was a human creation. It was a tool used to make sense of the complex diversity of the human species. It was not and is not an absolute truth. As we moved into the 21st century, our understanding of race and human variation has grown. We have begun to understand the intricacies of human genetics and the complex interplay of environment and biology in shaping human diversity. This has led to a shift in how we view race and racial classifications. But, as science advanced, so did our understanding of race and the Negroid classification. Fast forward to the 21st century, our understanding of race has drastically evolved. With the advent of modern science and technology, we've been able to delve deeper into the mysteries of human genetics and diversity, causing us to question the validity of classifications like the Negroid classification. In the past, physical anthropologists relied on visible physical traits such as skin color, hair texture, and facial features to categorize human populations. However, our contemporary understanding of genetics tells us that these traits are not reliable indicators of genetic similarity or difference. For instance, two individuals from different racial groups might share more genetic material than two individuals from the same group. This realization has led many scientists to argue that race is more of a social construct than a biological reality. In fact, the concept of race is increasingly viewed as problematic in contemporary anthropology. Many anthropologists now prefer to speak of human variation rather than race. They argue that human populations are not neatly divisible into distinct groups, but instead show a complex pattern of overlapping genetic and physical traits. This reflects our shared ancestry as a species and the fact that human evolution has been a continuous ongoing process. Moreover, the concept of race has been criticized for its historical misuse. It has often been used to justify social inequality, discrimination and violence. As a result, many anthropologists are wary of perpetuating racial categories that were originally created to serve oppressive political agendas. The Human Genome Project, which sequenced the entire human DNA, further confirmed that human beings are 99.9% .9 genetically identical, regardless of their so-called race. This finding underscores the fact that there is far more genetic diversity within racial groups than between them. So, where does that leave the Negroid classification today? The term Negroid may not be as widely used as it once was, but its impact is still perceptible. Today, the classification remains a topic of discussion, albeit less frequently, within anthropology and other related fields. It's important to note that the term has evolved in meaning and significance over time, reflecting shifts in societal attitudes and scientific understanding. The use of the Negroid classification is now largely confined to historical and sociocultural contexts, as genetic studies have revealed a much more complex picture of human diversity. The genetic variation between individuals within the same so-called race often surpasses the variation between different races. This has led many to question the validity of the traditional racial classifications, including the Negroid category. Nevertheless, the legacy of the Negroid classification persists. 
it continues to influence our understanding of human diversity, reminding us of the historical attempts to categorize and differentiate human populations. It also underscores the importance and challenges of studying human diversity without resorting to oversimplifications or stereotypes. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from the Negroid classification and similar categories will undoubtedly continue to shape the way we perceive and study human diversity. The journey of the Negroid classification from its inception to its current state is a testament to the ever-evolving understanding of human diversity. If you're intrigued by this content and want to explore more about Africa and human diversity, make sure you hit that like button. Also, do subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Don't forget to slam the notification bell to stay informed about our latest content. Together, we can delve deeper into understanding the world's rich and complex diversity.